Good evening, everyone. It's great to see everybody back tonight as we study from the Word of God again. If you have your Bible, open it up, please, to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. We'll begin our study there in just a moment. Now, I'm sure by now everybody is familiar or heard about the uh, great flood in my office, and not just in my office, but also in Max's office. And what I want to say, first of all, is thank you. Uh, It was uh, a big mess Thursday and Friday, and we had so many brothers and sisters in Christ here who came out, uh, men, women, and even children who came out to assist us. And that means a great deal to to both me and to Max, and we really appreciate that. And I was going to talk a little bit about that, but I already had another sermon prepared, so I'm going to pivot back to the other sermon that I was going to originally share with you, and that's going to take us down a path uh, that's going to begin tonight in Matthew chapter 28. I want to talk about fake news. We are living in the age of fake news. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Where it's kind of hard to distinguish sometimes what you're listening to or what you're watching on the news or maybe what you may see or find on Facebook. Almost every day as you read, listen, and hear, people talk about the news. And it can be challenging. It can be difficult to try to distinguish what is fact and what is fake. There's so much of this that it's, it's just difficult in general to know whether or not you're being misled. It's hard for us to kind of shift through all of this in the media. I don't really understand or know when all of this began, this idea of fake news. But I will say that maybe we find the answer in the Word of God because the idea of fake news has been around, well, since the beginning. If you remember back in Genesis chapter 3, verses 6 and 7, or in Genesis chapter 3, the first part of that chapter, remember what the serpent told Eve. He told her, you shall not surely die if you eat from this tree. And so he gave her some false information. He misled her. And when you look in the prophets, I've been studying from the book of Ezekiel, and you find Ezekiel spends an entire chapter, and hopefully, Lord willing, in a couple of weeks I'm going to talk about this, in chapter 13 where he talked about the prophets who had their own inspiration, the idea of false inspiration. Fake news has been around for a very long time. There's some really bad stories. I want to share one story with you. David and I are kind of doing the news thing this weekend. Uh, Did you hear about this uh, about a week ago? Hawaii, there was an emergency alert. You guys hear about that story where people (laughs) in Hawaii, they received this emergency alert that said, ballistic missile threat inbound to Hawaii. Seek immediate shelter. This is not a drill. So imagine, we got those amber alerts, half the congregation got the amber alert this morning. Imagine if that was the alert on your cell phone. There were so many people in Hawaii who were taking shelter. There was a golf event that was taking place, and they stopped everything only to find out, oops, false alarm. It didn't happen. There was no missile heading their way. And so when you think about this idea of fake news, it can be pretty bad, where lives can be impacted and things Things, that, things can really happen that can, that can change a person's life. Fake news is not something that's new. Whether it's in the beginning with the devil, whether it's with the false prophets, and even in the first century, we've seen this idea of fake news. And that's what I want to talk about for a few minutes this evening. There was some fake news being circulated concerning Jesus Christ. You know the story about this? When you open up Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the gospel writers are very adamant about what they believe and what happened. They believe that Jesus lived. They believe that he performed miracles, that he died on the cross for the sins of the world, that he was buried, and that he rose again on the first day of the week. When you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, this is exactly what we will find. In fact, I want to begin reading in Matthew chapter 28 because this is really important. In Matthew 28 and verse number 1, Matthew talks about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He said, now after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. And his appearance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. The guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who has been crucified. He's not here, for he has risen, just as he said. Come see the place where he was lying. Go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going ahead of you into Galilee.'" 
There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. And they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to report it to the disciples. We find this account not just in Matthew, but also in Mark, Luke, and John. And yet there was another story that was being circulated, that was being promoted throughout the first century. It was a story of fake news concerning Jesus Christ. And seemingly, it was as widespread as the true account of what we have here with what happened concerning Jesus Christ. This fake news story, this other story spoke about Jesus, and it also spoke about his death. This fake news story not only spoke about Jesus, his death, but also talked about the fact that the tomb was empty. But not because of the same reason that we understand it to be empty, according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And what's fascinating about this, if Matthew was written sometime in the, in the 60s, is that this story was being circulated along with the true story of Jesus for 20, 30 years, if not even a little bit longer. This story is found in Matthew chapter 28 and verse number 11. I want you to read this. I think it's interesting because Matthew actually talks about this fake news. He talks about what was actually being said and what was being spread concerning Jesus Christ. He said, now while they were on their way, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priest all that had happened. And when they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers and said, you are to say, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. Now we just read what truly happened, what really happened. So this lie is being manufactured. You tell them if, if they have questions about him, the disciples took his body. And verse 14, and if this should come to the governor's ears, we will win him over and keep you out of trouble. And they took the money and did as they had been instructed. And this story was widely spread among the Jews and is to this day. Did you hear that? This story was still being circulated in the first century even though the gospel story was being spread at the same time. This is a great example or really a terrible example of, of fake news. And one of the things I thought about is how many people believe this story? There are people who are being led astray as a result of this fake news. We can learn a lot about fake news just by looking at this story. Number one, when it comes to fake news, we always need to consider the source. Where did the source of this story come from? It came from the chief priest. It came from the elders. Now, they were religious-minded, but they had their own agenda. Not only, do we can, not only can we understand the source or need to think about the source when it comes to stories, but we also need to think about the motivation behind why this was being told and spread. You see, the chief priests and the elders, they were filled with hatred and deceit. They didn't like Jesus. He was taking too much of their, of their, of their crowds, and they wanted to destroy his influence at all costs. They weren't concerned about the truth, but rather about their status and power. Now, why am I saying all this? Well, there's been fake news around since the very beginning. Fake news in the first century concerning Jesus. Brothers and sisters, there's still fake news being spread today about our Savior, Jesus Christ. All you have to do is turn on YouTube. All you have to do is turn on the cable television or even Facebook for that matter. Watch some type of special television show. And more than likely, you're going to hear some fake news concerning Jesus Christ. The question for us tonight is, are we going to fall for it? Are we going to be deceived? This is more than just some catchy title of a lesson. This is something that the, even the Apostle Paul warned the Christians about. Turn over to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Look over in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and I want you to notice the first two verses here. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, we're still in the first century. We find that this idea of fake news, the apostles warned the saints about. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse number 1, Listen to what the Bible says. Now we request you, brethren, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, watch this, that you not be quickly shaken from your composure or be disturbed either by a spirit or a message or a letter as if from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. So evidently, there are some other letters that were being spread. And Paul said, don't be deceived. You guys have received the truth. The apostles, me and the other apostles, we have given you the facts concerning Jesus. And verse 3, he said, let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come unless the apostasy comes first. So he was warning them also, don't be deceived. There's a lot of fake information out there concerning Jesus Christ. 
for everyone here tonight, for Christians in the 21st century. That's an important lesson for us to hold on to. Don't be deceived because there's a lot of stories that circulate about Jesus Christ, and sadly, even Christians sometimes can be deceived. And so I want to share with you three three stories or three examples of this fake news concerning Jesus Christ. I also want you to see, and I want you to see from our Bible reading. You guys know where we're reading from in 2018, right? The book of Luke. I want you to notice how the book of Luke is going to help us to guard our hearts to guard our, our hearts and our children and make sure that they aren't deceived. And so we're going to look at three examples of fake news concerning Jesus. And then we're going to answer or refute these examples by looking at what Luke shows us in our Bible reading. I want to make sure that you understand that the Bible reading is a big deal and that the Bible reading can help us in a variety of ways. One of the ways is that it can help protect our hearts from being deceived by fake news. So let me give you three examples of some fake news concerning Jesus Christ. Number one is this. Uh, There are people today, and this may sound silly, but there's a lot of people that still say Jesus never lived. My friend, when you hear somebody say that, you need to shout out fake news, okay? It takes a lot of faith to believe that Jesus never lived because the the evidence is so abundant that he did live. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and this is really important, the Gospels are historical documents that we have that help us to give, to help us to see that Jesus really lived. I want you to notice, and Max talked about this a couple of weeks ago when you introduced the Bible reading about the importance of Luke chapter 1. Take note of Luke chapter 1, and I want you to look at the first four verses. These four verses are powerful to destroy this argument, this idea that Jesus never lived. What the gospel writers did, they were very careful in everything that they wrote, Uh, particularly when you look at Luke. Watch what he said in Luke chapter 1 and verse number 1. The Bible says, Inasmuch as many have undertaken to compile an account of the things accomplished among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word, it seemed fitting for me as well, having investigated everything carefully from the beginning to write it out for you in consecutive order, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the exact truth about the things you have been taught. What do we learn from these four verses? Number one, Luke was writing to a Christian named Theophilus. This was already a follower. He was already a follower of Jesus Christ. And Luke was writing to him to make sure that he knew that what he had was the exact truth concerning Jesus Christ. He didn't have to have doubts. He didn't have to have questions about whether or not the things that were said about Jesus was true. Luke made it very clear. What I'm writing to you is exactly that. It's the truth. And watch what Luke said in verse number two. He said, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word, it seemed fitting for me as well, having investigated everything carefully from the beginning. Luke talked to those who were with Jesus in the days that he lived, with the people that he ate with and talked to, and those who had seen him alive after the resurrection. And so what Luke is hoping us to see, what he was hoping Theophilus to see, is that you can have absolute certainty with what I've said concerning Jesus. My friends, we can know that Jesus truly did live. Because Luke gives us a historical document, a historical record, not based upon feelings or ideas or thoughts, but he went back and talked to people who really lived with the Christ. And his mission was to go after the exact truth. Luke wants us to know that Jesus really lived. And I'm not, being, uh, I'm not stretching it when I say that it takes so much faith to say that Jesus never lived. Because there's so much evidence. We have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And yet a lot of people say, well, Jesus never lived. When you hear somebody like that, just shout out fake news, all right? If you hear that on television or YouTube, close that video and watch something else. Because that person is not going to help you out at all. But it does raise a question. Why is it that people deny Jesus? Why is it that so many people are adamant that Jesus never lived? Why do you think that's the case? Because if Jesus really did live, what does that mean? There's some consequences with that, right? If Jesus really did live, if what we have in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are true, then it means that we're going to have to make some decisions when it comes to whether or not we're going to follow this man named Jesus. Now people say, well, give me some more information. Is that the best you got? You can't get any better than Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, okay? You go outside of the New Testament, you're going to find very little concerning Jesus Christ. You want to know who Jesus is, his life, 
you have the source. You have the record in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, you can go out and you can find non-biblical sources that say the same thing, that Jesus really did live. You can look at men like Josephus, who lived in the first century, who was not a Christian, and yet he understood Jesus really did live. What I love to tell people to kind of get them thinking is, isn't it interesting that we measure all time by this man named Jesus? It would take a lot to deceive so many people for so many centuries to measure all of our time by a man who never really existed. My friends, that's fake news, this idea that Jesus never lived. Now, there is something for us to think about. If we believe that Jesus really did live, then we need to act like it. Am I right about that? It's not enough to say, oh, yeah, I know Jesus lived. Great. And now, if he really did live, if you really do believe that, then that's going to have to have an impact upon our lives. You see, in our Bible reading, look over in Luke chapter 9. What we're going to learn this year in Luke chapter 9, we're going to hear some challenging teaching by Jesus Christ. In Luke chapter 9 and verse number 23, this is the impact this fact should have upon us that, yes, he really did live. The story that we have in Luke is real. It's not some myth. It's not some fable. It's not something that was made up. Jesus lived. And as a result of that, listen to what he wants from us. And he was saying to them all, verse number 23, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, he's the one who will save it. For what is a man profited if he gains a whole world and loses or forfeits himself? My friends, that's what Jesus wants us to do. Now, you believe that Jesus lived. That should have an impact upon your life and my life. It should change the way that we live. This idea that Jesus never lived is fake news, but that's not all. There's some other things floating around. Here's a second uh, example of fake news, that the story of Jesus was stolen from older stories. Is anybody familiar with this? That when you look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that the disciples, the apostles, they really just borrowed stories from older quote unquote gods, these mythical gods. And so when you look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there's really nothing new about this, uh, nothing new about Christianity at all. My friends, if you hear something like that, shout it from the rooftop, fake news, okay? And yet this is something that has gotten so many people off track. It has deceived so many people. A lot of times people hear that the story of Jesus has been copied from the stories of Osiris, Adonis, or Mithras. Sean and I have had Bible studies about this with people that he's talked to. Have you heard something like that? Here's how this story kind of goes. There was supposedly a god named Mithras who was born of a virgin in a cave on December 25th. And so what they want to do, they want to try to align these stories of these mythical gods and say, see, they're exactly the same. Now, I need to make something very clear. Jesus, his birthday was not December 25th, okay? Sorry, kids. That's, fu- that's fake news too, okay? But that's what a lot of people say, that this god, this mythological god named Mithras was born of a virgin in a cave on December 25th. He was considered a great traveling teacher. He had 12 disciples. He promised his follow- followers immortality. He sacrificed himself for world peace, was buried in a tomb, and rose again three days later, instituted a Lord's Supper. And was considered the Logos, Redeemer, Messiah, the way, the truth, and the life. Well, wait a second. That sounds like who? Sounds like Jesus. I guess we just get rid of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. No. This story, even though it may sound convincing, upon further inspection, my friends, is fake news. That's why you got to be really careful with these YouTube videos. Not everything on YouTube is true, okay? (laughs) And not everything on the Internet is true either. But yet these stories are circulated time and time again. The truth of the matter is the stories that Luke and Matthew and Mark and John and the apostles and prophets have given to us concerning Jesus Christ, they have not been stolen from these older mythological pagan religion gods. In fact, it's actually the opposite. In fact, we need to think about a couple of things. Number one, just because someone makes a claim doesn't make it true. Do you agree with that? There should be some type of evidence. Just because somebody says something, it doesn't matter even if they say it convincingly. It doesn't mean that it's true. There's got to be some evidence to back it up. And remember, secondly, that Luke, he spoke with eyewitnesses. He went directly to the source. He went to people who were with Jesus, who talked with Jesus, who saw Jesus alive. 
after he was raised from the grave. And so do not let anyone just cause you to disregard Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Oh, those stories are just made up. Why do you say that? That's interesting. Tell me why. A lot of times people just throw something out there and we're too quick just to say, well, maybe there are, maybe they are just kind of made up and we throw away all of this evidence. We can't do that. Secondly, when you really start to dive into this information, what history has shown us is that these mythical gods, uh, particularly like Mithras, that story I gave to you, is that uh, these, uh, these individuals came after the beginning of Christianity, came after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Modern scholars all universally conclude that there were no dying and rising gods that preceded Christianity, which means that the disciples didn't steal anything from these pagan religions or these false gods. In fact, it was the other way around. But understanding that and knowing that becomes very important because sometimes when you hear this, well, the story of Jesus was just stolen from other stories or from these older stories, it really sounds convincing. But there's more. When you actually dive into the evidence and start looking and making these comparisons, there are no comparisons. We know from Luke chapter 1 that Jesus would be born uh, of a virgin. His mother Mary was a virgin. And when you start looking at this Mithras character, it says that he was born of a rock. Now, how is that similar to Jesus at all? And how is that uh, the apostles stealing that from him compared at all? It doesn't make any sense. When you look at the story of Mithras, it says that he never sacrificed himself for the sins of the world. He sacrificed some animal. And yet, when you look at the story of Jesus, what do we find? He died on the cross for the sins of the world. You see, it's very easy to become deceived by this idea of fake news. You hear something, oh, that has to be true. I guess I'm just going to give up my faith. Be careful with that, my friends, because fake news has been around for a really long time. And just because someone on Facebook or on YouTube or something like that says something does not mean that it's correct. You're going to have to dive into the information. You're going to have to dive into the Word of God. And that's what I want to impress upon you. This Bible reading is so important because it gives us the evidence that we need. Turn over to Luke chapter 2, and I want to remind you, we've talked about this. Max talked about this a couple of weeks ago, but I want to go back to it. In Luke chapter 2, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, distinction, when you look at the story of Jesus compared to these mythical gods, is that we find the story of Jesus in a, in a historical context where we hear about other men and women and places and events, and we can go back and we can fact check. We can go back and see, do these things really happen? Do these people really live? You can't do that with Osiris or Adonis or all these other mythical gods. There were no eyewitnesses. There is no evidence. Not so with Jesus the Bible says in Luke 2 and verse number 1, Now in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone was on his way to register for the census, each to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David. We could go into chapter 3, where Luke names all these officials, and we can see all of the historical information that Luke provides for us. This is important because we can see that Luke wrote about Jesus from a historical perspective. We have this eyewitness testimony. We have all this background information. We can go back and we can see that the things about Jesus really took place. This idea that the story of Jesus has been stolen from older stories, my friends, it's false, it's fake news. It's not true. But if you don't dive into the Word of God, if you don't take the time to seriously think about the importance of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, then you can be easily deceived. We all can be easily deceived. And by the way, the story of Adonis and uh, Osiris and all these other mythical gods, there's no resurrection story. And yet what do we find in the gospel? That Jesus rose from the grave on the first day of the week with eyewitness testimony. Don't believe the lie that the story of Jesus was stolen from other older stories. Let me give you one more example, and then the lesson will be yours. Jesus was only a good moral teacher. Fake news. Jesus was only a good moral teacher. A lot of people say that. A lot of people say, okay, fine, Jesus really did live, and I know what you say about the, the Gospels, and we have some information, but I just think he was only a good moral teacher. 
He wasn't the son of God. He wasn't God in the flesh. He was just a good man who taught some really good things. That's what a lot of people believe. They refuse to admit that Jesus is the son of God. They refuse his miracles. And so when you hear people say that, that he was only merely a man, a good moral teacher, cry out and let, let them know fake news. It would be interesting if we actually said that to somebody when they say something like that and how they would actually respond. Well, that's the mentality that we need to have. And let me tell you why. There's a big problem when people say that Jesus was nothing more than a good moral teacher. You know what the problem is? Think about all the claims that this man made. Think about everything that he said concerning himself. Look over in Luke chapter 4. We're not there yet in our Bible reading, but we will be in Luke chapter 4 and verse number 17. I want you to see that Jesus said that he was fulfilling Old Testament prophecy. In Luke 4 and verse 17, and the book of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. He opened the book and found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set free those who are oppressed to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and he closed the book gave it back to the attendant and sat down and the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him and he began to say to them today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing Jesus made the claim that he was fulfilling Old Testament prophecy. Certainly that would mean there was something special or unique about this man named Jesus. Turn over to Luke chapter 6 and verse number 5. In Luke chapter 6 and verse number 5, Jesus would say to them, the Son of Man, talking about himself, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Jesus spoke about his authority, that he is Lord of the Sabbath. Look at Luke chapter 6 and verse number 46. Jesus said this, he said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say. Jesus made the claim, you need to listen to what I have to say. That's a pretty powerful statement for a man to say, you have to listen to everything that I have to say. Look over in Luke chapter 7 and verse number 22. In Luke 7 and verse number 22, as he was having this conversation with some disciples of John, he answered and said to them, you go and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, the poor have the gospel preached to them. Jesus performed miracles. He had to be more than just some regular man, and more than just some good moral teacher. Jesus was performing miracles. He was demonstrating his power to others. Now look over in Luke chapter 22 and in verse number 70. In Luke chapter 22 and verse number 70, and listen to what Jesus said here. Luke chapter 22 and verse number 70. And they all said, are you the son of God then? And he said to them, yes, I am. Jesus made the claim that he was more than just a man, that he was God in the flesh. He demonstrated miracles. He spoke about his authority. He showed his power. He was more than just a man. He wasn't just merely a good moral teacher. He was a good teacher, and he did speak the truth. He was the son of God. He was God in the flesh. And this is important because when people say, well, he was only a good moral teacher, then what does that mean with everything he said? It means that he's lying about everything he said. Come on. You see that? A good moral teacher is not going to make all these claims at the same time being good, moral, and lying about everything in his life. That doesn't make any sense. That, my friend, is fake news. A good moral teacher wouldn't lie about his identity, his power. And when you hear this idea, he was just a good moral teacher, shout out fake news. False. As our Bible reading helps us to see, he was more than just a man. He is God in the flesh. And it wasn't only Jesus who made this very clear. The Holy Spirit has made it very clear. Look back in Luke chapter 1 and verse number 35. Did you read this already? This was in our second week. Luke chapter 1 and verse number 35. The Holy Spirit makes this clear. The angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and for that reason the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. Jesus made it clear that he's the Son of God. The angel sent by God made it clear. Uh, this inspired words made, these inspired words make it clear that Jesus is the son of God. The father makes it clear that Jesus is the son of God. Look over in Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3 and verse number 21. Luke chapter 3 and verse number 21. All of this is in our Bible reading. The Bible says in verse 21, now when all the people were baptized, Jesus was also baptized. And while he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him and bodily formed like a dove and a voice came out of heaven. 
You are my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit all say the same thing. Jesus is the Son of God. He was more than just a man. He was God in the flesh. They are very clear about this. Now the question, are we clear about it? It's one thing to hear about all of this. But what do we truly believe? Do we believe that he was born of a woman who was a virgin, that he was sinless in nature, that he was God in the flesh, that he came to redeem mankind? Do we really believe that? We should. Because the story has been preserved for us so that we can believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. You see, my friends, we cannot allow fake news to deceive us Instead, we need to be going out there and sharing the good news about Jesus Christ. There's a lot of fake news that's being spread. Can we go back to Matthew chapter 28 and close? In Matthew chapter 28, I want you to think about this for a second as we prepare to close here. Matthew chapter 28. What Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John have given us are the facts, the truth concerning Jesus. When you hear these stories, this idea that he never lived, that this story was stolen, that he was only a good moral teacher, you can say that's false, and let me tell you why that's false. Because I have written in my Bible this information concerning Jesus Christ. Now, a question for all of us is, what are we going to do with this? The Bible helps us to see in Matthew 28, after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. And his appearance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. The guard shook for fear and became like dead men. Dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who has been crucified. He's not here, for he has risen, just as he said. Come, see the place where he was lying. Jesus has risen from the grave. And he is in heaven at this very moment reigning at the right hand of God. Now, what are you going to do with the resurrection story? There's only two possibilities. It's either true or it's false. What are you going to do with this story? What are you going to do with all the historical information, the historical evidence, the eyewitness testimony of more than 500 seeing him alive after he was risen from the grave? What are you going to do with all of that? It takes a lot to ignore all of this evidence and fact and truth. What God wants you to do, he wants you to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He wants you to examine the evidence. One of the things I admire about Matthew is that he wasn't trying to hide anything. Yeah, this story is out there, but you guys have already received the truth. Don't be deceived. That's what he wants you to do. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God? You have the evidence. What I want to encourage you to do right now is to act upon it by confessing you believe Christ is the son of God and by being baptized into his death, by being buried in water and being raised to walk in newness of life. Is that what you need to do today? If you've already done that, please hold on to your faith and do not be deceived. If you're subject to the invitation, come now as we stand and as we sing.